From Monday, May the 10th, all players at all levels of the game in Ireland can return to contact training outdoors and in pods of 15. Joining us now on FAI TV to discuss this return to training for all our players and to offer some guidelines for players and coaches to follow is the FAI's Medical Director, Dr Alan Byrne. Alan, you're welcome back to FAI TV. And first up, we have to say that this return to training for all our players is a most welcome one. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a really, really good day. Uh, a progression, um, as we have been saying, on our return to uh, full competitive games, which obviously we hope will happen in early June. But this is a great day to get back to contact training. And I think that's important that it is training um, uh, and nothing else. I'm sure, Alan, like everyone else, you can imagine the level of expectation for players and coaches alike ahead of this return to contact training. We're also looking forward, as you say, to June the 7th and the return to competitive football. So football is winning this battle. Yeah, we've, we've um, I think football and everyone involved in football, the players, coaching staff, parents, guardians, uh, COVID officers and people involved with the clubs at all levels have been really um, leading the way in terms of how they've apply themselves to uh, the government guidelines and uh, and behave themselves. So we want to keep that going. Uh, obviously, the target is to get to June 7th and, and, and start some uh, competitive fixtures. With that June 7 date in mind, it is really important not to let our guard down. So, Alan, if we could have a look at some of the key points ahead of this return for adult amateur and youth players, and also, of course, to step up the contact training for all our underage players who've been back for a couple of weeks now. This is all in pods of 15 and outdoors. So it is all outdoors and it is in pods of 15. So for adult footballers, 18 years and over, uh, we can have one coach and 14 players. And for the underage players, it's two coaches and 13 players. It is all outdoors and it is in pods of 15. I think it's important as well to say that we, we don't want any mixing of the pods because that obviously increases the risk whereby if a player or a coach becomes positive and there has been mixing of the pods, that could reduce in the number of close contacts. Well, it would reduce in the would it, uh, uh, mean that the the number of close contacts uh, uh, would increase, and therefore more players uh, than are needed would be stood down. So we want to keep the pods separate. Uh, if you have a facility where a number of pods uh, can train side by side, that's acceptable. We would ask you to include a buffer zone between each pod of five metres. And as I've mentioned already, no mixing of the pods. So small-sided games within training are permissible so long as it's within your pod. Absolutely, Carl. We can have small-sided games. We need those if we're going to prepare for competition. And that's why getting back to contact training is so important. And contact, Alan, is what it says on the team. Yeah, it is. Um, I think it's important to maybe state the obvious that... Uh, the virus doesn't know that we're moving from non-contact to contact and doesn't care. So, um, you know, that's an important consideration. It doesn't somehow mean that the virus is, is a less of a risk. We still have to uh, put all of the mitigation measures in place up to now. A couple of things we might look at, Alan, just in relation to coaches and players. I mean, so first of all, traveling to and from training, what, what are the guidelines there? Well, the key issue around traveling is to avoid carpooling where it's possible. And I do appreciate, and particularly for underage players, that may prove to be very difficult because they may leave, need some lifts to get to the training. But I would ask where it's possible to avoid that for the same reason that you increase the risk of becoming a close contact and being stood down, which is obviously not something anybody wants to experience when you get this close to contact training and obviously looking ahead to returning to play. And arrive ready to train as a message as well, isn't it? There's no use of yes. meeting rooms, no use of meeting rooms. Yeah, well, so we've mentioned this before many times. Thankfully, we're coming to uh, some nicer weather. Hopefully, it keeps up. Um, but um, the risk of uh, transmission of the virus increases significantly indoors, so there will be no use of dressing rooms or meeting rooms. And in terms of the coaches then, Alan, they're such an important part of this. You've mentioned the compliance officers, players we've spoken about. But for coaches, for them to enjoy training, to keep safe and to look after their players, what's the key messages for them? Well, the coach is such a huge role to play uh, with the players. Um, and I think the, the best advice I can give to the coaches is to lead by example. Uh, show uh, the right behaviours before we're going to training, on the way to training, 
at training and after training. Um, and for example, when a session uh, is stopped, for example, where some explanation has been given or some information has been given out, that even though we're outdoors, that the two meter social distancing is adhered to, uh, that we don't share uh, food and don't share bottles while at training. So I think leading by example, not just in coaches, but it's a key component of uh, mitigation around uh, the whole uh, viral transmission area. So coaches have a huge role uh, in that as we return to uh, contact. And as we said, Alan, this is something to enjoy, the fact that players can get back to contact training from May the 10th. So, Alan, as we know, this is something to really look forward to for all our players going back to contact training. But as you've said many times in FEI TV, COVID doesn't care who you are. No, it doesn't. Uh, it, you're, you did right, Carl. This is something, you know, this is a day to look forward to, to get back out into, you know, normal training, shall we say, and uh, in preparing for competitive games. But the virus doesn't care whether you're the coach, the manager, the captain of the team, the club secretary, the COVID officer. It doesn't care. It, it just wants um, a host to uh, infect, and it's best that you're not that host. Dr. Alan Bourne, FAI Medical Director, thank you as always for your expert guidance and advice there ahead of this return to contact training from May the 10th. If you do have a query on any of the issues raised or anything to do with COVID, just email your question to covidchecklist at fai.ie, covidchecklist at fai.ie, covidchecklist, all one word, of course. And the updated FAI Safe Return to Training Protocol is available online at www.fai.ie. Enjoy the return to training. And as Alan has said, stay safe.